Hello and welcome to episode 16 of our Knights of the Republic Let's Play. We have just arrived on Dantooine, as I'm sure you remember, and it's time to uh, explore a bit, see what we can find, see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into. Can you not go? Okay. Um, I think all these doors are closed and locked and not even actually doors, but sometimes you can find like extra lock boxes and stuff hidden behind ships and... Uh, in unintuitive areas, so oh, you can't jump down there, I guess. But, um, yeah, so we've been instructed to go see the Jedi Council, so we're gonna make our way there, maybe stop along the way and see if we run into anybody interesting. I think there's a shop back here, if I'm not mistaken. Aratek Mercantile. Hey, Aratek. Sounds like it could be like my company. Alright, let's talk to this guy. Greetings, my young friend. I hope you are you're not a member of the Order, as you are not wearing the traditional garbs of the Jedi. I am Kratos, your call, proprietor of the general store here on Tatooine. Not much to look at, but I'm on the ground floor. <laughs> I mean, look at this planet. Majestic fields, rolling plains, wide open terra firma, elbow room, that's what people want. Once word gets out, we'll have settlers and tourists from the Galactic Corps just dying to come here. I guess we'll be waiting for them. Not that blasted circuit corp, that's for sure. Not this time, no sir. This time it'll be Kratos your call who makes the big bucks. But listen to me. You didn't come to listen to my ramblings, I bet. What can I do for you? First, let me ask what he has against Circuit Corporation, because this is the first time we've heard of them in this game, and um, they're obviously a, a big Bioware name. Um, sort of the corrupt, villainous corporation. Uh, don't get me started on Circuit Corp. They've got a monopoly on half the galaxy already, and they do everything they can to keep anyone else from getting a foothold in their territory. Extortion, bribing officials, and government diplomats. Not to mention driving up prices on essentials like food and water on distant colonies. I've heard stories of, like, of them letting people starve to death because they couldn't afford their jacked up prices. And they've thrown themselves in with the Sith. Things have only gotten worse. Do you mean Circuit Corp or ally with the Sith? The Sith are tangled up in an, in an expensive war with their public. They need supplies, equipment, resources. There's a lot of opportunities for a company with no morals like Circuit Corp to make some major profits. Malak has given them exclusive trading rights wherever the Sith have control. It's bad enough they're helping to finance Sith war effort. I've heard rumors of even worse stuff. Salvaging, pillaging planets, genocide. The Sith and Circus seem like a perfect matchup. So I actually didn't remember that they were allied with the Sith. It seems kind of weird that the Republic would allow them to get away with that. Um, especially after the war is over, but um, I guess it is what it is, and uh, they do seem to have their hands in the pockets of some senators and diplomats, which is uh, not surprising and probably has some real-world analogs. All right, so let's see what he has for sale. Uh, med packs, I could probably use a couple of those. I did use a lot of them in Terrace, some standard combat armor types. There's an, uh, an eight battle armor, but you have to have heavy armor to wear that one, which I don't think... Well, I guess Candorus and um, Karth do, being soldiers. Now this, look at that. Sana Siki's Blade. It's a pretty good sword, and it does extra damage versus droids, and it's upgradable. And it's got some uh, flavor text there. Sana Siki used weapon to kill Nelinik, a Zabrak who assassinated the Achani High Protector with battle droids. Cortosis protects the blade against lightsaber sparring damage while energy cells disrupt droid opponents. So that's kind of cool. Um, it's very expensive, obviously. And as... Uh, I don't know how much longer I'll be using swords. I will not be buying that. There's a, another good blaster rifle too, also really good against droids. Um, a really good visor for stealthers. I'm not sure how... I've never really played a stealth heavy character in this game. I don't know how deep the system is or how useful the system is. I might give it a try and if it's something I enjoy doing, then I'll, uh, I might invest in those later on. Some nice glasses, with some better skills, a breath mask if you need a poison, that's kind of cool. Um, it does look kind of weird when your character's wearing it, though. Some nice gloves, shields. That's a nice belt right there. Saves all plus two and strength plus two. Some implants, adrenals, pizzak cards. A little plus minus five card. I could probably use one of those. Plus minus three. I think I already have one of those. I'll have to find a pizzak player to check. I don't think you can check your pizzak deck while you're in any other mode of the game. I will buy that. And if I don't already have... Do I have two plus threes? Plus minus threes? I think I do. Plus minus one. Do I have those? I'll have to check and come back, but... Some good merchandise here. And who's this guy? He's the owner. Let me see what you have in stock. Oh, he sells droid parts. Okay. So if you want to upgrade your droids, you can get some stuff here. But um, I don't know if I'll be using T3 at all for a while, so I'm just going to ignore those guys for now and move on. 
This guy, I noticed some conversations later on. Does he have anything to say now? Greetings, may I take a moment of your time? Sure. I represent this, a citizen of Dantooine by the name of Rundell. His ranch is difficult to Mandalorians. His daughter was kidnapped. Sasha. Do you actually believe she's still alive? It's not customary for Mandalorians to terminate their captives. Huh. Um, is there a word for this news? I wish there were. But the Sino credits. Um, sorry, I have no idea who you're talking about. Um, problems with Mandalorians common on Dantooine? I understand they are, though I know little of the history behind the conflict. I'll keep an eye out for the girl. Alright, so we'll keep that in the back of our mind if we see a girl named Sasha. We know, okay, it's this guy I'm thinking of that has some conversations later on. Disa Lerjada. I have not heard of any new apprentices being expected for accepted for training. What brings you to this place? Um, I'm just going to my business here as my own. Alrighty. We'll talk to him again later on. There's some Jedi walking around the place. Got some Good nice day robes. To you. I'm afraid I cannot speak to you at the moment. I apologize. Yes, he's very busy pacing back and forth, as you can see. Uh, you there, Padawan. Why are you not wearing the customary robes of the Jedi? She seems nice. Do you nice. mock the honored traditions of our order? Yep, definitely it. Um. Hmm. I'll be a little rude. She was rude to me. Back off. I'm no Padawan. I'm Leovara. I just came here with Bastila. Bastila. I have heard of her. They say she has already mastered the art of battle meditation. Remarkable in one so young. Though I've heard she has a foolish pride in her own talents. But as for you, you claim you are not a Padawan? I find this hard to believe. The Force is strong within you. I can feel its presence. If this is some type of jest, it is in very poor taste. The Jedi Order is not a subject for jokes. I didn't come here to be scolded by you. No, I suppose you did not. I apologize. You better Please apologize. forgive the abruptness with which I first greeted you. It was there harsh and perhaps unfair. My master often warns me that I must learn to control my emotions. I see I have much left to learn. I wish you a pleasant stay here on Dantooine. May the Force be with you. Alrighty. Um, let's see, that goes to the outer courtyard. There's some rooms back here. But let's go here first and meet with the Jedi Council. There they are. And there's Karth. Hey, Karth. They're waiting for you. I don't know what you're randomly doing here in your underwear, but I'm not going to ask. Ah, so you are the one who rescued Bastila. It is appropriate you are here. We have been discussing your rather special case. I am Jar, a member of the Jedi Council. With me are Master Vrook, Master Vandar, and of course the chronicler of our academy, Master Dorak. These Padawan guys. Bastila, I am sure you are already. I remember familiar. them. Um, <laughs> so you're trying to make your little trip. Isn't the Jedi Council on Coruscant? Yes, the High Council of the Jedi Order is on Coruscant, but we are the council in charge of the training facility. Oh, I got a mini council going on here. How cute. What do you want from me? Bastila tells us you are strong in the Force. We are considering you for Jedi really? training. Really? Strong in the Force? Master Jar speaks out of turn, perhaps. We need indisputable Master proof Rook. of your yeah, strong he's... affinity to the Force. He's got a memorable personality, kind of grouchy old Jedi. Training. Proof? Surely the entire Council can feel the strength of the Force within this woman. And I have already related to you the events that took place on Terrace. Thank you, Perhaps Basler. it was simple luck. We both know there is no luck. There is only the Force. Don't remember that being part of the Jedi Code. We all feel the power in Bastila's companion, though it is wild and untamed. Oh, yeah. Now that this power has begun to manifest itself, can we safely ignore it? The Jedi training is long and difficult, even when working with a young and open mind. Teaching a child is hard. How much harder will it be for an adult to learn the ways of the Jedi? I am ready to accept the training, and my age has nothing to do with it. Such pride, such arrogance. <laughs> This one is already on the path to the dark side. As are many Ouch. who are not given proper training, Master Vrook. Only through our guidance can we hope to lead those who have strayed back to the path of the light. Traditionally, the Jedi do not accept adults for training, though there are rare exceptions in the history of our order. 
but you are a special case. I agree with Master Dorak. Many of our own pupils are leaving the Jedi Order to follow the Sith teachings. We need recruits to stand against Malak. With Revan dead... Are you certain Revan is truly dead? What if we undertake to train this one and the Dark Lord should return? We should discuss this matter more fully in private. Bastila, you and your companion must go. This is a matter for the Council alone. Oh, so things are just getting interesting. Now. We shall return to the Ebon Hawk and leave you to... <sighs> we just got here too. Alright, back to the Ebon Hawk we go. At least a lot of port is there, it looks like. That's nice. Up, oh, dream time. The dark side is strong in this place. I can feel its power. Is this wise? The ancient Jedi sealed this archway. If we pass beyond this door, we can never go back. The Order will surely banish us. Are the secrets of the Starforge so valuable? Can its power truly be worth the risk? This morning's getting stranger by the minute. First Bastila comes out looking like she saw a ghost, and now you. Well, Bastila did mention that you should go to the council chambers before she left. So that was interesting. Um, I guess we had a vision of a younger Malak and Revan finding some kind of artifact. I'm mentioning something called the Star Forge, so we'll have to uh, keep that in mind. Um, let's uh, let's go. You got it. Alright, we can't choose Basilic, she's already there. Let's choose Karth and Mission again, haven't used them in a while. Yeah, we can always change it up at any time. Alright, let's talk to Mission. I guess she's probably a little still getting over the whole terrorist being destroyed thing. And who can blame her? Huh? Oh, sorry. I was yeah. thinking about terrorists. I still can't believe it's gone. I mean, I grew up there and now it's 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 just gone. Yeah, like imagine if like your city just got like nuked or something. It was just everything you ever knew obliterated. That would really suck. Um, I guess at least she didn't really have anybody, any, you know, any family or anything, just Salbar. But still, um, I'm eh, let's be a little vindictive here. Malik will pay for what he did, Mission. Yeah, I know. The Jedi got rid of Revan, so I figure Malik's days are numbered too. But that doesn't make yeah, them go away, you know. Look. I'm not saying I can't go on or anything like that. It's just, it's a shock, you know? I mean, I knew the Sith were evil and all, but the reality of it kind of slaps you in the face. But I suppose that's why we need to stop Malik, right? The more time I spend dwelling on Terrace, the more chance some other planet will get wiped out. I guess that's what it comes down to. So don't worry about me. I'll be okay. And if you need my help against Malik or the Sith, I'll be there for you. It really was a... a great plot point to have Terrace get obliterated because it really does, I mean, the entire game so far, except for the very beginning, has been spent on Terrace, so it's like you get to know these people, you help them, you spend I don't know how many hours you've spent so far, but probably oh, let me see uh, yeah, 15 hours already. Has it really been that long? Oh yeah, I don't know if it was actually that long, I think I probably was AFK for about 5 hours during the middle of it there already, anyway <laughs> Whoops. Um, but anyway, however many hours we've actually spent on the planet getting to know and help all those people, and now it's just all, all for nothing because it's gone. All that remains is this little group of bandits who escaped on the Ebon Hawk. Um, that's what I think I wanted to mention too. The um, the Promised Land people. Uh, apparently, they uh, I don't I don't know how they would have made it there in time. So I guess they didn't make it there in time, but they did manage to survive the bombardment. Um, you can find, and this isn't really a spoiler for the game. You don't find this out until playing Slow Tour if you if you do some of the side quests there. But um, yeah, Rukul dies before they make it there during the journey, but uh, the rest of them do make it. And um, even though the Promised Land they find is, has I'll get back to that later. Most unusual development. 
She claims you and she have shared a dream. A vision of Malak and Revan in the ancient ruins here on Dantui. Is that what it was? These ruins have long been known to us, but we believe them to be merely burial mounds. Perhaps they're more than we first suspected. If Revan and Malak found something there. Probably should have checked it out when you, you know, built the long cleave here. Um I'm gonna say how a pest will know if we shared a dream. She says she has felt your presence within the dream. The presence she has felt within you ever since Master Vandar. Ever since Taurus. It is not unknown for this to happen between two people strong in the force. Bastila has described this shared dream to the council. In great Seems to be something special to our connection that we there. It is more than a dream. Me. It is a vision. The force is acting through you, hmm. as it acts through Bastila. So Bastila and I are special. Uh, I'm having visions now. You and Bastila share a powerful connection to the force, and each other. This is not unheard of. Connections often form between master and student, but rarely does a bond develop so quickly. Whatever dangers may lie ahead. We cannot ignore the destiny that has brought you and Bastila here to us, together. What are you talking about? You and she are linked, as is your fate to hers. Together, you two may be able to stop Darth Malak and the Sith. But do not let your head be filled with visions of glory and power. Too late. Such thoughts are the path to the dark side. Oh, the way okay, of yeah. the light is long and difficult, as you must learn. Are you ready for such hardship? Um. Yes, I'm ready for whatever awaits me. Understand that there is little choice in this matter, for you or us. <laughs> Rich, now you have such confidence in the me. The numbers of our order dwindle. We have sent many Jedi in quest of a way to thwart Malak's advance. Many have not returned. The Sith hunt the Jedi down like animals, ambushing and assassinating our brothers wherever they are found. We fear it is only a matter of time until they discover even this hidden refuge. Other Jedi have fallen from the light and embraced the dark side, giving their allegiance to the Sith and Malak, their dark lord. Um, how can he be stopped? Perhaps our hope lies in the dream you and Bastilla shared. The Council has come to the conclusion that you and Bastilla must investigate the ancient ruins you... Me and Bastilla. Perhaps there you will find some clue, some explanation of how Revan and Malak were corrupted. And perhaps there you shall find a way They're quite to the optimists, aren't they? I mean, we might just find, like, a dead body or, a, I don't know, an old urn or something. All right. Um, I'm ready now. I accept this mission. The Force flows through you like no student we have ever seen. But you are willful and headstrong. I wonder if they say that no matter what, or if that's the result of some of the choices I've chosen previously. The ruins, Hopefully the choices. You must be trained in the ways of the Jedi, so that you can resist the darkness within yourself, within all of us. Otherwise you are doomed to fail. I have been kind of trying to choose like the brash options when I can, to kind of develop a bit of a personality for her. Um, uh, yeah, she's still a little impulsive, so we don't have time for this. You must learn patience and discipline. The ruins are a place of corruption. The dark side is strong there. We cannot risk sending you there unprepared. Why don't we just you like all go together? It's not once. like a long walk or anything. You have a destiny upon you that you must be prepared to face. The entire fate of the galaxy is upon you. I can only hope you will Under prove pressure. up to the task. The path you have chosen to walk is difficult. Oh, yay, training montage. Intensive training will prepare you physically for the demands of the Order. Oh, best let's be my ass. will teach you to channel the power of the Force. To truly understand the way of the Jedi, you must open your mind to knowledge. Seek <laughs> wisdom in the teachings and of the you will learn how to stick your hand to the middle of a data pad, apparently. A Jedi is never alone. Others in the Order will always stand by you. You and Bastila share a special bond. Do not be afraid to turn to her when you need help in your training. The way of the Jedi is difficult. It requires great discipline. There we go. Now I'm on the offensive. Yet even though you are a mere apprentice, your potential is unlimited. And your progress amazing. It is pretty cool. 
In all my years, I have never seen one who has mastered the initial training so quickly. You have done in weeks what many cannot do in years. I am honored to welcome you fully into the Jedi Order. Woohoo! Soon your apprenticeship will end, and you will be granted the title of Padawan, the lowest rank of those within the Jedi Order. Yet first, you must prove yourself worthy. Um, what must I do to prove myself? In the traditions and customs of our Order, as handed down from master to pupil for a thousand generations, you must successfully complete three tests before you earn your place among the Jedi. What kind of tests are these? These tests will see if you have truly mastered the training you have been given, both mental and physical. Upon completing these tests, you will pass from apprentice to Padawan and join in the ranks of the Jedi. First, I will test your knowledge of the Jedi Code. These tenets must always guide your actions. In everything you do, you must always be conscious of their wisdom. You must prove you have a Jedi's understanding of the code. Return when you feel you are ready for this challenge. All right, so I'm trying to make like mental lists of things to talk about after the conversations uh, because I don't want to be talking over them. Um, one thing I wanted to mention when they were talking about like the special bond Bastion and I share, obviously that has a different context if you're a male character. There uh, is a romance option with her, but because this is before Bioware started incorporating same-sex romances, uh, that option is not available to female characters. Although there are other uh, hints at female-female relationships you can pursue later on. But um, not with Bastila, though. She doesn't swing that way, I guess. So, and the, what was the other thing? Oh, we were talking about the uh, the outcasts. So they do make it to... Um, I'm just going to run around for, for lulz, see what's over here. Um, they do make it to the place, but all the droids and the systems that ran the Promised Land are defunct, so they kind of have to start it up again themselves. Um, they do survive the bombing, as I said, and they uh, persist there for a while, but eventually their serums run out, and uh, over hundreds of years, their descendants uh, get killed, and um, their numbers thinned by famine and plague and uh, attacks and all kind of manner of things, um, until eventually the last generations don't even remember how they got there or who they are. Um, but you can find their journals and records in Sotor and sort of, I guess, uh, maintain their legacy that way. So it really sucks that like, not even like any of their descendants survived to um, to the Sotor era. It would have been cool to at least have like you know some of them survive or some descendants. And uh, I don't know. So it kind of seems like all that that quest, which is like one of the best side quests in the game so far, um, was kind of for nothing. But I mean, yeah, it was still a cool quest. So there's always that. Let's see what's in here. Alan Why are Natale. you bothering me? I'm here to speak with the council, not all righty, some all righty. servant. I'll leave you alone. Is this a lockbox? No. Not a quick one, anyway. Let's see. This one is... Yay. I'm going to take a moment and level up my other characters, because there's no reason to save their levels. Um, skills... I don't know. Should I start doing demolitions on him? Start doing demolitions on him. He actually has a class skill, so. Feats. Um, where's the one that should wear implants? This one? Yeah, let's do that. Bring some clothes too on. I'm gonna bring it. We have three of these, might as well get one of those. Uh, attributes. So he's a ranged character, so dexterity would be good. Intelligence. I hate that it's an odd number, but I'm not going to waste a point on intelligence. Should make him kind of tanky now as dexterity. I think he does wear heavy armor, so having too much dexterity would be bad. God, I don't know. Constitution. Let's go with that. Why not? Because wisdom and charisma aren't really that useful for non Jedi characters. Um, demolitions. Feats. Yay, Master Tobin. Wait. Yeah, Master Tobin fighting. Jake, does he have two blaster pistols? Well, he doesn't have anything right now, but. I could probably sell some of these, actually. We only need six blaster pistols, but I'll, I'll sell all my stuff at some point. I might even do that between videos, just so you guys won't have to sit here and watch it the entire time, because I imagine that won't be super interesting. Uh, let's see. Hopefully, leveling up is, because. Yeah, I want you guys to see, like, some. 
examples of what you can do. I don't know. Accept, sneak attack, nice. Hmm? Alright, I'm gonna save the game. Dantooine 1. Alright, explore that. I think there's a guy who plays Bazak in this room, maybe? That guy? Let's see. Yay. Do you have any cards to sell? Um, oh, he has lots of cards. Nice. First time you look at my deck, though. You can wait dropped 120 credits. Sweet. Um, Alright, so there's my deck. Uh, so, let's see. I have one plus or minus three and a couple plus minus ones. I'm not gonna lose any credits though, am I? Because I didn't bet anything yet. Five, two, eight, one. Uh, no, I didn't lose anything. Good. All right. Uh, All right. So plus or minus two. I want that. Plus or minus four. I want those. Plus or minus five. I'll buy one of those. And the guy outside. What was it? A plus or minus three. I should probably buy that. Um, but I'll buy that next time I'm by there. I'm gonna try to make a deck of all plus or minus cards because obviously those are the best. Alright, let's put these to the use. Um, okay. I'm just gonna restart all this. Okay. How do I have four of these? God, I guess I got some of them from boot or something. I shouldn't have bought that many. Uh, plus two, plus three. Yeah, what the hell? Let's go with all plus or minus cards, even though they're not all low cards. Yep. Alright, so nice, you got a nice low card. Nice. Oh, okay. Don't have a plus or minus four. I could use two hand cards. I think you're allowed to play two hand cards in one turn. I'm pretty sure you are. To match it, but that's just not worth it. Not when I have minus cards, too. I'm going to risk it. There we go. So now I can do it only using one card and a duplicate card at that, so that's nice. Good, good. In case it's not clear, I like getting low cards for me and high cards for him because then he has to lock in first. And then I can decide if I want to... Do I want to go for it? Oh, this is tough. I could get an easy win by spending one of my hand cards, or I could save the hand card and risk it. If I get a five, that's a win, but I have to use a hand card. Six or seven are wins. I'm just going to do it, whatever. using these cards up so early in the game, but I mean, I'll go, whatever. If you're not going to go for a 20, what are you going to go for? See, but at least he didn't win, I guess. Still, he's got a big advantage having all those hand cards now. Well, <laughs> yep, see, yeah, I have no hand cards, and I have to go first. I am one round up at least, but, all right, all right. He's going to lock in there, yeah. See, there's just no way we'll beat that using random luck. Or maybe there is. Okay. I spoke too soon. <laughs> oh, see, this sucks. There's like a 50% chance I'm going to bust. Yeah. Whatever. Gotta go for it. Can't beat him with a 15. No. And that's why it sucks going first and having no hand cards. See? See? Oh god, this sucks. He's gonna win now because. Stupid game. Oh, 20% chance I lose here. 30% chance I lose here. I, I don't know what to do. I can't. Uh, if I don't. Like, he's gonna beat me if I. I mean, what are the chances he doesn't have a plus? I mean, if he has any kind of plus card in there, better than plus two, he's going to win. Or any kind of minus card if he busts. It, it's, I can't win with the 16, so I'm going to I'm gonna have to hope he busts and doesn't have a minus card, or um, hope I get that 40% chance. 
Nope. See. Oh uh, well. <sighs> like I love Pazak as a game. It's so much fun. But at the same time, it just it sucks that they always get to go second. That is a huge advantage in that game. There are so many better ways they could structure that. Maybe one day they add to Swotor and it'll be a coin flip to decide who goes first each round. Or like the winner goes second of the previous round or, or something, you know. Alright, um... I think they said Master Dorog is going to teach me some stuff. Apprentice. Have you come seeking knowledge of the past? Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Or so they say. As a chronicler of the Academy here on Dantooine, I feel it is my duty to share the history of our order with the newly initiated. Unfortunately, our recent history is one of tragedy and bloodshed. The Mandalorian Wars, the fall of Revan and Malak, the rise of the Sith. There are important lessons to be learned from these events, if we do not wish to repeat the mistakes of our past. So I've already kind of gave you guys a synopsis a couple episodes ago of uh, the recent backstory, but Master Dorak, or more specifically Bioware, could obviously do a much better job of that than I could, so I'll I'll um I'll listen to what he has to say, and if you don't want to hear the backstory or if you already know it from Swift or whatever, you can just fast forward a couple minutes ahead. Um, very well, tell me the history of the Jedi. Of course, I could not tell you the entire history of our order. Yeah, yeah. The Jedi have existed for thousands upon thousands of years. For a thousand generations, in fact, give Republic or take. Itself. Instead, I will begin 40 years ago with the War of Exar Kun. Like Malak and Revan, Exar Kun was a Jedi who fell to the dark side and led an army against the Jedi and the Republic. Exar Kun was defeated, but the war left both the Republic and our own order severely weakened. For 20 years, we struggled to rebuild, trying to erase the scars of the terrible conflict. So that's really interesting because this whole era was pretty much unexplored for the longest time in Swift history. This is 4,000 years before the movies, in case you didn't know that. Um, but one of the uh, post-movie books mentions an ancient Sith Lord named Exar Kun. So the author of that book series and a comic book illustrator got together, if I remember correctly, and um, decided to do some comic books from the 4,000 year ago period, uh, which detailed Exar Kun and Uokul Droma, and it was this whole series of books, the Tales of the Jedi series, and um, they're actually one of the few comic books I own, but it, it was great. and. Uh, so when they decided to make when Byward decided to make a video game, they decided to set it in this era to have give them a lot of freedom, but still have that Star Wars feel and the Star Wars lore. So it, it was a really great decision, and it's nice that they they didn't just plop it down there. They actually wanted to take in all those comic books and the bits of lore that existed already, and this game really took that era and catapulted it forward and made it into like this huge uh, I don't know what the word for it is, but this place in history where a lot of Star Wars lore is now located. Um, anyway. What about the Mandalorian Wars? Twenty years ago, the Mandalorians, aware that the Republic was in a weakened state, began conquering small worlds on the outer rim. I believe this game is about forty years after Exar Kun, but I could be completely wrong on that. Jurisdiction. After much debate, the Senate chose not to intervene. As long as the Mandalorians avoided planets that were members of the Republic itself, there would be no retaliation. Mm, but we ended up in a war anyway. The Mandalorians stockpiled resources from their conquered worlds, yep. preparing for massive assault. Seven years ago, they launched a simultaneous attack in three separate sectors of Republic space. The Senate had no choice but to retaliate with the entire Republic fleet. The Mandalorian Wars had begun. That's the thing. After this game was made, they actually did additional comic books about uh, Revan and Malak fighting the Mandalorian Wars, so I'd, I'd love to read those one day. I think that'd be really interesting. Um, did the Jedi join in? The Republic petitioned the Jedi Council for aid, but there were many factors to consider before we allowed ourselves to be drawn into another conflict so soon after the war with Exar Kun. While the Jedi Council preached patience, there were many among our order who were eager for us to join the battle. Two young knights in particular demanded immediate action, Revan and Malak. They rallied many of the Jedi to their cause, and against the wishes of their masters, joined the Republic fleet battling the Mandalorians. Revan was a brilliant military leader, and the Republic fleet began to win victory after victory. Four years ago, the Mandalorians surrendered unconditionally. 
See, Revan did the right thing. No one is denying that Revan was one of the keys to defeating the Mandalorians. But something happened out there on the Outer Rim. Instead of returning after the war's end, the ships under Revan's command went deep into unexplored space. They claimed to be searching for the last remnants of the Mandalorian fleet. All contact was lost. For many months, it was assumed some great disaster had befallen the entire fleet. Everyone thought they were dead. There were unsubstantiated rumors of Revan and Malak being seen on a number of different planets during these months. Scattered sightings that were never confirmed. Where did they disappear to? Perhaps they simply went far beyond the edges of Republic space. Maybe they found previously undiscovered hyperspace routes to the ends of the galaxy. Nobody knows for certain. Three years ago, Revan and Malak returned at the head of a massive invasion fleet. Revan had assumed the title of Sith Lord. The hero had become a conqueror. Hmm. So what happened to them out there? Where did Revan get the ships for the Sith fleet? Some of the ships in the Sith fleet are those that were under Revan's command during the Mandalorian Wars. But many more are of an alien design we've never seen before. The source of this massive fleet is one of the many things about the Sith we cannot explain. The it mystery seems deepens. impossible to have created it in such a short time, yet we cannot deny its existence. <laughs> the source of the Sith soldiers is unfortunately much easier to understand. Initially, the bulk of the force were former Republic soldiers who had served under Revan. With each conquest, thousands more flocked to join the invaders, swelling their numbers. Even many of our own order have betrayed us, lured by Sith promises of riches and power. I still like the idea that they would just like deny the fleet's existence. Like, nope, nope, can't exist. It's not there. It's all an illusion. Um, okay. How can anyone hope to stop the Sith? For two years, the Sith were all but invincible. Fortunately, Bastila and her battle meditation allowed the Republic to win a few key victories and kept the Sith from total triumph. In desperation, we set a trap for the Dark Lord. Bastila was with the strike team that tried to capture Revan. As you probably know, she was there at Revan's end. That was nearly a year ago, but things have not improved. Malak has stepped in and assumed the mantle of Dark Lord for himself though he's far from Revan's equal in strategy or tactics. Still, his fleet continues to grow in both ships and soldiers. If we do not find some way to stop the Sith soon, Malak will overwhelm us with sheer numbers. Um, what can I learn from Revan's history? Revan's tale shows us how even the greatest of Jedi can fall to the dark side. You must always be on guard against the evil that dwells within you. Think hard upon this lesson. Right, so that's interesting. Lots of mysteries there. We don't know where the fleet came from. We don't know what happened to them out beyond the Outer Rim. Hopefully things we'll discover in the course of the game. Um, maybe those secrets will be the key to stopping Malak and his new Sith Empire. Uh, I will think on this Master Door. Right. Greetings. As I still you... didn't learn about the code. Um... Where are the archives? This facility is a training academy. The archives here are restricted to those who have attained the rank of master. Great. The pursuit of knowledge is an. You should ponder the history of Revan. It contains many lessons you may. Yep, okay. So, in other words, Bioware didn't want to take the time to write out a whole archive, so it's that uh, restricted. Um, don't worry, I'll find a way to stop the Sith. Your confidence is admirable, but you must guard against pride and arrogance. Yeah, that's going to be hard. Tale shows us how even yep. Okay, so I thought he was going to talk about the Jedi Code. Maybe it was somebody else. Um, Master Vandar, you know the Jedi Code? Good evening, Apprentice. I trust your yeah. training. Um, I like how he, there's kind of an inconsistency with, when it comes to Yoda's species, whether they all talk like Yoda does or just him. But um, some do and some don't. Um, I guess you could always reckon that as saying, like, maybe certain tribes of them do and other ones don't just like you know humans obviously have different ways of speaking not to mention different languages but um there are only four or five of these guys in like the whole lore i think and uh, they have not ever been named some people call them the wills because there was in lucas's original draft they were supposed to be like the journal of the wills or something but he's already said that's not that's not them anyway i see knowledge of the jedi code there we go all jedi must know the code its tenets are the fundamental teachings of our order 
think and meditate on these truths, apprentice. There is no emotion. There is peace. There is no ignorance. There is knowledge. There is no passion. There is serenity. Serenity. There is no chaos. There is harmony. There is no death. There is the force. I have faith that you will achieve the rank of Padawan soon. Master Jar is most impressed with your progress. Surprised there's not like a uh, harmony spec somewhere in Swiftor. There is a serenity spec, obviously, which the, for those of you who might not watch my other videos, Leovara the Shadow in Swiftor is serenity spec, so justly chuckle at that. All right. Um, I don't know if, if this game, I'm almost positive it did not make the Jedi code. I think it was, I don't know what the first book or source was for the Jedi code, but it's been used in a lot of games and books and comics and everything since. Um, this game does make up the Sith code, which we'll, we'll learn later on. But uh, for now, Greetings, my young pupil. Your pro let's see, I am ready to continue my training. Soon your apprenticeship will in the I am ready for the test. These tests, you must now prove there is no emotion. There is peace. There is no ignorance. There is knowledge. This is, um, it's not too hard to even guess at these because they're all opposites, obviously. The opposite of ignorance is knowledge. There is no passion. There is serenity. Serenity now. There is no chaos. There is harmony. There is no death. There is the force. You have learned your studies well, apprentice. It will not be long before you are a full member of our order. But first, you must pass the second test and learn Yay. about the most prized possession of a Jedi. The very symbol of our order, the lightsaber. The lightsaber is the traditional weapon of our order. It is That's a symbol a of a practical. Jedi's skill, dedication, and authority. And each lightsaber is as individual as the Jedi who wields it. The blade is made of pure energy focused by polished crystals in the hilt. As the second test, each Jedi must construct her lightsaber with her own hands. And now it is your time. I could they actually replace the pronouns Speak depending on, Dora, you know, what, guide you through with your character's male or female. Crystal. So I think if it was male, it would have said with his own hands, not her own hands. That's a nice touch to re-record those. All right, um, that is the first trial, but this video is getting pretty long now. So I'm going to cut it and we'll call that an episode. And I'll be back to begin working on our lightsaber and our second trial. See you then.